Hello folks, welcome to the channel. Do hope everybody is keeping well today. So again, you find me loitering with intent on a or in a multi-story car park. A couple of days ago, I rode Yamaha's MT-09. I'll put a link up here and down in the description if you want to go and have a look at that. That was a cracking little bike to ride. So I thought, well, I've already ridden the MT-09, so why don't I take the 2023-24 Yamaha Tracer 9 GT Plus out from my local Yamaha dealer in motion. Uh, in motion were very kind to let me use this bike for the last couple of days, so I have done a little bit of night riding as well. So I put about 60 miles on the bike. A big thank you for Danny as well for allowing me to test ride the bike. So this is my first ride review impressions of the 2023 Tracer 9 GT Plus. But before we have a look at it, let's roll the intro. Welcome back folks. So here we are then. This is Yamaha's Tracer 9 GT Plus. So this is the what they call Power Grey. Comes in two flavours. This one, the Power Grey and the Icon Performance. So the Plus model, that's going to set you back something in the region of 15,016 of your hard-earned pounds. The GT, that comes in at £13,216. And then the base model comes in at £11,100 and 16 pounds so what are we getting for the plus well one of the main differences you're going to get a rather nice seven inch tft screen on the front there just here you've got the uh, radar cruise control so you're going to get that as well there's a few other things but they are the main things you're going to get uh, with the plus model over the gt standard model but i will put a list of extra things you get with the plus model so starting at the front then the bike is wearing bridgestone's batlax t32 sports touring tires well the bike is a sports tourer and folks it's definitely a sporty touring machine in the 60 odd miles that i've put on the bike so we've got those tires front and rear at the front we have yamaha's twin pot calipers and then at the rear we have a single pot caliper from nissin bike itself has got upside down forks and with the plus model we have semi-active suspension uh, looking at the top here we've got kyb front forks so it's semi-active all done electronically but you can adjust manually the preload on the left and the right fork as well and then at the rear you can also adjust with the adjuster here you can manually adjust the preload setting the screen is adjustable more of that when we get onto the ride Lighting wise all around is LED, you've got the DRLs in here and these are the corner lights as well and these are your main lights. One just comes on for normal riding and then when you go to high beam they both come on. Indicators wise again your yeah, LED indicators and something of note if you walk past these and knock them off apparently they are a right raw pane in the bottom to actually insert into the mount. You've got some hand guards clutch lever is non-adjustable but the brake lever is adjustable for span and then in relation to the switch gear it looks like they've gone to the parts bin and just raided the switch gear for the T-Max I think it's pretty much exactly the same switch gear on the T-Max scooter um, I think the only extra you're going to get on here the adaptive cruise control just on the front here this is how you adjust how far you want the, the motorbike to get to the car in front just pressing uh, this button here and then on the right hand switch gear part you just got the mode button start stop and it has the buttons as well down here then it's all a little bit scrappy down here which it's a shame that they couldn't do anything just to maybe put an infill panel or something down there here we have a usb a type connector i think that's five volts not sure of the ampage pretty handy if you've got a phone on here you want to charge or a gps unit etc the tank itself is 19 litres and 19 litres at 5 litres per 100 kilometres at 47 miles per gallon. That is going to give you a range before you have to get off and push the bike of something in the region of 237 miles. There is no range to empty on the 7 inch dash surprisingly so when the fuel warning light does come on I think that is 
and if I'm wrong I'll put something up here I think that gives you about 0.6 of a gallon which is going to give you at that fuel consumption something in the region of let's have a look about 28 miles before the <laughs> the bike just stops and you've got to push it the engine then that is the very nice CP3 engine 890 cc's of Yamaha's triple engine finest pushing out 117 horsepower or 119 PS if you work in the new money and that's going to give you about 93 newton meters of torque. Exhaust wise not massively pretty just goes under the engine and then the exhaust pops out under there. The handlebars are actually adjustable so just remove the two top clamp bolts from each clamp and then you can move it into another position. The foot pegs are adjustable just remove the two bolts and then the whole thing can go up to the next hole and that's about two centimeters or something like that. At the rear then if you haven't got the hard cases on you've got tie down points for any bungee cords and stuff put your hooks through here so that's pretty good. The bike itself weighs something in the region of 223 kilos which is a few kilos heavier than the Tracer 9 GT standard version. Nice grab handles at the back there so moving it around car parking spaces etc around your garage shouldn't be too much of a problem and it does come with a center stand as well and the only thing I found with the center stand is there's a chance that you could just get a little bit of oil on your boots because the stand when you put your foot down as you can see here is just a little bit close to the chain side stand though absolutely no problems finding the peg to move the side stand out. Seat height of this as it is at the moment, so this is in the standard position, that is 835 millimeters tall, and you can actually remove the rear seat and give access to the front seat, and then there's some spaces underneath it, move those, and that will actually reduce the seat height to 820 millimeters. Storage under the seat then, put the key in, undo the key and the back seat comes off first. You've got a little bit of storage under there for documents, etc. And then you can have access to the battery under the front seat there. Uh, pretty easy to remove. Quick shifter wise, yep, we've got a quick shifter. That's the latest generation of quick shifter. That's generation three. So Yamaha's Tracer 9 GT Plus. Is it a pretty bike? Well, I'm not sure. I'll let you folks be the judge of that and make any comments in the comments section down below. And then the final thing to talk about then is the 7-inch TFT, which has been brought over from Yamaha's scooter side, the T-Max, I think it's called. So 7-inch TFT. And you can actually, if you want to, have a moving map on there, which we'll show you very shortly. But there is a sub subscription fee to pay to that, to Garmin. I think it's about £4.99 a month, if you so wish. But yep, that is the TFT. I've got this Garmin app opened up, which you need to have it opened up all the time if you want the map to go onto this 7 inch TFT, and you have to have this cable as well. So it has been a little bit fiddly to actually get it to go onto the screen, but let's see if I've managed to do it. So press the home button on there for a short while, and then we'll just accept that, and then we'll see if it loads. It wasn't loading earlier on, but we'll see, there we go. So that's what you get. So that's what you get, you get that moving map on the seven inch display so i'm going to leave that in there so you can have a, a look at it but you have to have that open otherwise that just switches itself off so let's just start the bike up so we've got a different display now there just make sure we're recording which we are it gets a bit embarrassing otherwise so yamaha's tracer 9 gt plus with that 890 cc three cylinder engine cracking engine so if we just want to go back to the normal screen there we go hold the home button in and that's the normal screen so nice seven inch tft it's got everything on there that you need uh, the only thing it hasn't really got is a fuel uh, or distance so you run out of fuel really which is a shame so what i suggest you do is just reset one of your two one of your two trip meters when you fill it up because you'll know how many miles you can sort of get on the tank before the fuel warning light comes on and then yeah do it that way really but it's a shame they haven't put a distance to remaining till you run out of fuel on it really so but there we go it's not the end of the world so yesterday last night i came out and i actually rode the bike at night time just to see what the headlights were like so we'll just sort of as we go back on my preferred demo route i shall cut the videos between daytime and nighttime just so you get an idea of what the headlight is like and it's a bit different as well isn't it
Right, this is just a first ride view. So here we go then, Yamaha's Tracer 9 GT Plus. Well, basically the non-plus version that just comes with those weird clocks down here. Yeah, I've done about, oh, no, nearly 50 miles on it. And I've ridden the MT-09 last week from that car park actually. Uh, and what I've got to say is the Yamaha MT-09 engine is an absolute cracking engine. Oh, it's waving me through. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the seating wise, we've already gone over the, the seat heights and you can get a, a lower, you can lower the seat on this one, uh, but you cannot get a low seat per se. But on the standard setting, which I guess you call the high setting, I've got no problems with this bike at all on my five foot nine frame. In relation to the angle of the legs and the dangle and all that kind of thing, it is a very comfortable place to be. Um, yeah, it's just a good place to be for my five foot nine stature and 86-ish kilos. So the bike itself, it is a sports tourer with 117 horsepower, 93 newton meters of torque, as we've already mentioned based on the MT-09. I don't know if Yamaha have raided the parts bin, but the actual TFT, I believe, has come straight from the T-Max scooter, together with this new, the newer switch gear as well. But I think the only thing extra that this has got on it, I may be wrong, is you've got the adaptive cruise control, the distance from the vehicle in front of you uh, that you can set, and that is shown on the TFT itself. So the engine is an absolute peach. Uh, if you want to have a bit of fun, you can go and have a bit of fun with this engine. So if you're into your sporty side of riding, riding this bike will certainly, yeah, it will certainly do it for you. I mean, I've been riding bikes for a long time. And in fact, a mate of mine, Ali, hello Ali, we went away, was it last year or the year before? Did a big trip down to the Alps. I was on my GS1250, he was on his uh, Yamaha Tracer. And yeah, he, um, he went well on that. No problems with aches and pains. And he's a big chap, muscular chap and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so he really likes his bike. He uses his daily commuter to and from work. Yeah, uh, it gets used every single day. So there's a lot of these bikes are out there, folks. And again, if you've got one, make some comments in the comments section down below if you've got any issues with it. Certainly in relation to the Plus model, that would be lovely for people who are looking at getting one of these. But in the two days I've been riding the bike <laughs> it does make you laugh it's certainly got some go in it and if you're just new onto these kind of bikes you're just stepping up to something more powerful this is going to be ideal for you you can ride it like a pussycat and then it will be like a little bit of a tiger and a lion when you wind a throttle yeah so it's got plenty of go in it but it's not too harsh low down and the good thing with these bikes is you might want to ask why have they not put an MT 10 engine in one of these frames. I think the MT-10 engine will be absolutely bonkers in a sports tourer. I think that would be too much. You wouldn't be able to ride it at 80%, but you could ride this at 80%, have fun, and you know it's not gonna cause you serious injury. It's a comfortable place to be. You've got that extra gel padding in the seating, and you can change the position of the handlebars and the footrests if you want. So you can try and get uh, yourself dialed in. Um, the only thing I'm not overly keen on is the noise generated from the screen. It's very easy to move, but it does uh, generate a lot of noise. And that's been a common theme for all the uh, reviews that YouTubers have done. When the bike was cold, there was a little bit of a judder from the clutch when you just let the clutch out in first gear. But once the bike's got warm, that judder does go. I do actually sit on the, on the bike rather than in the bike, if that makes sense. And it is a... The wheelbase is slightly longer than the MT-09, but you, you still know that you're sat on a, uh, a, a short wheelbase bike because it's because it very, very flickable and you can have lots of fun on this sporty bike. Folks, I can't be bothered sat in the snow moving traffic, boring you stupid, but the slow speed handling is pretty good actually. I think what we'll do is whilst we're in slow moving traffic, we'll go and have a little bit of fun and back soon.
we are now back. So I had a little bit of fun there. So the bike is actually very sporty. You can have so much fun on the spooning it around. Uh, speeds at 70 miles an hour, absolutely no problem at all on the motorways. You are going to get some noise from the screen, regardless of what position you've got it in. Very easy to move. <coughs> Everybody moans about that, but you can just get a little deflector or a new screen and put on the top. It's, it's not turbulent, it's just very noisy. It's bizarre, but everybody says that, and yeah, I'm no different to that uh, either. Surprisingly, the indicators aren't self-cancelling on a bike, which MR say is their most complex electronically filled bike. Um, but yeah, no self-cancel indicators, which is a bit of a strange one, actually. So the brakes work fine on the front, uh, no problems there at all. And the back brake, I just found it to be a little bit on the soft side and the bike itself is done just shy of 600 miles. So there we go, I'm plugged in for the map whilst we're not doing anything. Uh, there's the map on the screen. It's kind of an old, doesn't look, yeah, it looks a bit of an old kind of design really, but it is there if you want to pay your £4.99, but would I? More than likely not if I'm being honest, but it is there. Riding modes then, you have four riding modes. So you've got street mode, which I'm in at the moment, you've got rain mode then you've got sports mode and obviously a more aggressive throttle i've got it on street mode at the moment and then you have a custom mode now each of those modes other than custom you can is predetermined by yamaha you can't change those i don't think but you can go in and create your own custom mode in the settings if you so want now in relation to the uh, semi-active suspension the only thing you can adjust obviously is the preload on the front and the back manually what you can do though in the custom menu is I think they have a adaptive suspension one and two settings so in the sport setting it's on adaptive suspension setting one so that's the firmest and then the others the rain and the street they use adaptive setting two slightly softer but to be honest I couldn't tell it I can't tell any difference it's quite a firm ride the only thing I would do if it was my bike, I'd just play around with the preload actually. Um, but very easy to change modes, just press the button there. Really, really simple. And you can also turn the traction control off uh, as well if you so wish. It's got a full suite of electronic gizmos if you want to go and have a look at those. Trash control, you can switch trash control off by pressing uh, the SC button. So SC off, I'm going to go for yes stability control so I think with stability control off I think that's everything else is off so let's just have a look at that so if we go into let's have a look uh, machine settings go in there uh, yeah so what have we got in there so everything has actually been switched off so going into the Yamaha ride control having pressed the SC button that is everything switched off and I suspect if I switch the bike off back on again then it will default back to it being on if that makes sense so there's no SC light there, so stability control is back on again if that makes sense so we've got the full protector suite that's what I'm getting at so we just have a look there so machine settings go to YRC and yeah so we, normal service has been re resumed so if you switch stability control off you lose your electronic blanket and so you can flip the bike if you want to uh, but when you switch the ignition off back on again, it all sets back to the electronic safety net looking after you. So that is uh, all of that stuff done. So I think what we'll do is press the home button. Uh, these are backlit as well, folks. You'll see in the nighttime video as I connect it in together. What we're going to do now is just very quickly have a look at the radar control. So basically it will also brake for you and you can set the distance uh, you want it to be to the car in front just using the button down here. And then when it's active, it will give you a predetermined distance. As you slow down, uh, it will apply the brakes, slowing down, but then it, then it will just release everything and then you're on your own. Right, so let's just set that then. So it's got the car in front, 40 miles an hour. Let's just set it to 50. There we go, 55. And it's just going to give me 40 miles an hour. And then as that car slows down, we will slow down and the bike will apply the brakes. And then when it goes, well, that's close enough, guys, the car... Uh, will disengage or something like that and then you're on your own basically so there we go it's slowing down it's slowing down i'm not doing anything it's slowing down it's applying the brakes i'm not doing anything and there we go and it's dumped it so i'm actually on my own now so i'm not going to go into that traffic 
So that is it. So it's a good system. You just got to take your time and, and go and learn it, basically. Right, that's enough of all that. I think that's pretty much everything covered. It's just a great bike. Very, very flickable. It really is flickable. If you like your sports touring, you won't need any more power than this. It's great. I just don't get why it hasn't got self-canceling indicators. If you've not ridden one of these CP3 engines, folks, go and take one out from your local Yamaha dealer. These, these engines are absolutely brilliant. They're not going to scare the pants off you if you're a new rider to something a little bit bigger, but it's just a nice engine and it's got enough to put a smile on your face as well. Nice, it gives you the best of both worlds compared to a twin cylinder and a four cylinder bike. So you've got the low down pull and then you've got the high, the high end rush as well. Just very, very good. Gets a little bit raw. You can feel the vibes under the seat and through the bars about seven, six and a half, seven thousand revs. Um, and then you're really on it then. But cruising at 70 miles an hour, no problems at all. And this bike just is very, very flickable very flickable you have a lot of fun on it a lot of fun some testers have said about the battle axe tires because they're, they're the cheap version of the proper version but yeah i have noticed it just tends to drop in a little bit from the front but other than that it's all right maybe put some better tires on if that's your thing but the engine is lovely really nice and it's got that lovely sound, but very tractable all the way through, really. A little bit of a lull as you accelerate on the open gas, certain areas, but it's very nice. Get the view, car's coming, so no overtake there. But plenty of, plenty of power for the overtake. Plenty of power. Get the view, nothing. Quick shifter. Quick shifter's great. Car around the corner. Oncoming traffic. Yeah, there we go. Quick shifter. Oh, lovely. And a lot of wind from the screen. It's not bovetting, it's just noisy. Just very good. A lot of fun on this. And the gearbox is fine. Oh, man. So much fun on it. Whether quick shifting or using the clutch yourself. Just very nice. Very nice. Just a great engine nice overall package it does feel like they've raided maybe a few few bins from Yamaha to bring some parts onto the bike maybe the seven inch TFT which is very nice yeah it's a, it's a, it's a I think you could spend a lot of time in the saddle talking of saddle then it's a bit of a, a sculptured saddle so you can't really move around too much on it but the good thing is you can because it's um, yeah, the, the type of riding position. You can actually stand up, stretch your legs, rather than a true sports bike. You can stand up and stretch those legs as well. And you've got the hand guards. Yeah, just a nice package, and obviously less than a thousand cc, possibly cheaper insurance as well. Um, but yeah, it's a good machine. Again, folks, if you've got one of these, either the early ones or whatever, make some comments down below so other potential owners can get a better idea. But yeah, very nice. Sixth gear, 40 miles an hour, and it just pulls two and a half, two and a half thousand revs. You know, woof, and you're gone. Really nice. Put luggage on it. Load of accessories you can get for it. Standard, you get the side panniers. Uh, apparently, you can get some full face helmets in them, but I don't know if that's just a small full face helmet, if you know what I mean. Uh, but if you want to get a top box, you can do. So, final comments then. My final thoughts then on this initial test ride review of the GT Plus. So I think it's a great bike. It's very good as a sports tourer. Uh, you're going to have a lot of fun on this. Not too scary and you can squeeze a lot of power and performance out of it without terrifying yourself. So it's a, a good bike from that point of view. It's competitors. I suppose you're looking at the Kawasaki Versa, if I pronounce that correctly. And then Suzuki's GS, whatever they're on now with their... Uh, names GSX8 something or whatever the thousand cc kind of bike and then maybe BMW's 900 XR all those called a kind of sports tourer kind of bikes but this is definitely a, sp a sporty bike and it goes like the clappers it's not perfect I've already spoken about uh, the screen in front there uh, that's not particularly brilliant uh, in relation to how much it's going to cost above the base model, about £4,000. 
I don't know. I know you've got the double lights down here for the uh, for the the non uh, GT Plus version. So the GT version just gets that weird looking screen there, two bits of screen, as per as does the base model. Would you then go from the base model or the GT up to the Plus and spend that extra money? I don't really know. I know you get the TFT with the seven-inch screen and the Garmin stuff, but then you've got to pay 4.99. Or would you just get like I've tried? Just get. Don't bother with a subscription and put a, something like a Carpy Ride. I put a link down. Go and have a look at a Carpy Ride five-inch screen on here, and then use your preferred apps that you use for navigation. I think that's the way I would go, and I would do away with connecting a lead into the USB and paying my Garmin subscription. The engine on this bike, really, really good motor, very good. Uh, the mirrors are fine. Uh, we've already spoken about the screen. It turns in really nicely. It's a very um, it's a very quick bike to turn in. Uh, yeah, twitchy, I think some people might call it. Comfort-wise, it's nice. And you can stand up on the pegs as well. It's a shame it hasn't got, uh, all the switches aren't backlit. Uh, the indicator isn't backlit. The horn and the little joystick down here, they're not backlit. I don't think, neither is the the um, hazard lights. So that, that some are backlit, others some aren't. Uh, the seat though, sculptured seat. So it's a bit like the BMW X1000XR just holds you in position, but I found it to be really good, and I've done just done over 60 miles on the bike. Engine is awesome, brakes are good, rear brake on this is a bit soft, um, and you can lower the seat if, if you want to. So it's not the prettiest of bikes, but boy, oh boy, does it go. And you can chuck those side cases on it and get some extra accessories if you want. There we are, back it in motion. Thank you very much. There's Peter. Um, but it's a really good, good machine. Uh, it does what it says on the can, it's a sports touring machine and you can go fairly quickly on it and cover a few miles because the seat does seem to be quite comfortable. So good machine, uh, make some comments in the comments section down below. You've got all the techie stuff on it. Yeah, would I pay the extra money for it? Yeah, I don't know actually, I'm not sure but some people do. But it is a good machine, it's a good sports tour. Anyway, that's enough waffle, you're going to get two year warranty. Uh, to your recovery and I think like the MT-09 if you go to Europe then you can pay 30 quid and get coverage in Europe as well so that's it folks it sounds good it sounds good as well it does sound good it's a nice machine uh, build quality yep as per normal Yamaha it's not too bad at all a nice deep paint on these on the, the, the tank and everything everything is practical uh, nicely finished yeah it's a good machine so thanks Danny in motion ride safe see you again soon take care Sure for now. Bye-bye.